In this video, we'll take a look at creating a web service server. So far in this video series, you've learned to create a web service client application that consumes a web service. Here we'll look at building a Genero BDL program that is the service itself and can be providing that service to other client applications. So in this module, you'll create a web service server or producer and also generate a WSDL file, a descriptive file, for a web service created with the Genero Web Services extension. The basic steps for creating a Genero Web Services server application is to first define all of the operations that you want your web service to provide. So these are going to be the function or functions that make up your service. Then you're going to define the input and output records for each of the operations, write a BDL function for each operation, and create the service, its operations, publish it, and register it. And then last, you'll want to start the service and manage the way that you process the requests. You'll have to create input and output records for each of the operations. The input parameters and return values are not allowed. One global or modular variable per function is permitted for an input message and for an output message. Each message must be a record where each field corresponds to the name used in a SOAP request. You'll see that these fields are filled with the contents of the SOAP requests by the web services engine just before executing the corresponding BDL function. So in other words, you're going to define what the input and output uh, uh, records are, and then, uh, as we'll see, we'll use methods to build the service, uh, providing that information so that uh, the WSDL that is built from it uh, has the correct information, and a client can determine how to use your web service. Genero 2.0 permits the adding of optional attributes that map to XML data types. In this example, we've created the globals file that has a record called add in, and it has two integers, A and B. Then there's an add out record, so this would be the output record, which is going to be the response. So we're going to want to get from the client requesting the information, the A and B values, and we'll provide back this R value. The next thing to do is to write the BDL function. It's a normal BDL function using the input and output global records that you have defined. You cannot have input and output parameters, and you have to use global or modular record to provide input and output values. It can't be function uh, localized to the function. Each function can become a separate web service operation and requires its own global or modular record. Now looking at our example, we've now created, we're beginning to work through the uh, calculator server service here, and we can see that we've created a function called add. And in this function, we're going to utilize our A and B integers that we defined in our record and we're simply going to um, add those together and provide that information into the record that we also defined, which is add out. So when the client requests the, to use this service and uses the add function, uh, this is the operation that will be performed. The next part is to create the service. So we've written this add function, we've defined the input and output records, now we need to create the service uh, and uh, its operations, publish and register the service. So the first thing we've done is to import the web services uh, library, which is com. And then we've created a function called create service. So when this function is called, the service is created and we're going to be utilizing methods from com.webservice and com.webOperation. Now the serve service is going to call the method createWebService, 
we're going to give our service a name and we're also going to give it a unique namespace. You'll see more information on namespaces in the documentation. Then we're going to create the service. So we created the web service and we're going to create the type of web service that it is and this is going to be an RPC style. If you recall from a prior video we learned there were two styles available both doc uh, and RPC style and these methods require you to supply the information for the name of the function, what you want it to be called, the input record, and the, at, uh, the output record. Once you've provided that, you can then publish the operation using a call to the publish operation method and then you can also register the service providing the serve name which is what we called our web service and the namespace that we gave to it. So when we call this function the service is created the next thing we'll need to do but looking at each of these methods that were used you can see here that we had to provide for the create web service method the service name and the namespace and in terms of creating a valid namespace it is recommended to use your company's website domain name and append a string to make it unique creating the operation again requires you to use either the create RPC style method or the create doc style method and in the prior example we used the create RPC style method and we had to provide again the name of the 4GL function the name to give the operation itself the input record and the output record Then the publish operation method allows us to publish the uh, operation that we identified and we're calling it from the serve object which again is the service, the web service, if we look back here, is the web service that we created here. Then finally to complete the web service server we need to in the main block of the program uh, define a status variable that we can use to return information on the status of the uh, request make a call to the create service function that we just wrote and start the web services uh, engine so here we're starting the server by calling the start method from the web service engine class so our code might look something like this. Here we have a while statement and within that we have a case statement that depending on the processing of the service we are supplying some information. So a zero indicates that the request was processed and we listed out a couple of other options that may have occurred. Then we have the standard int flag checking which allows us to identify if there has been an interrupt detected. The last thing is to compile the application. So we're going to compile all the modules. We're going to link them or build them in Genero Studio. And again, just like when we created the client application, we want to include the WS Helper module as well. Now that we have a web service server, we're going to need to generate the WSDL or WSDL information. As you recall from prior video, the client needs this WSDL or WSDL to utilize to create the code needed to access the new service. And it's important to note that the web service server should be self-descriptive and self-contained. Self-descriptive means you can ask the server to get the WSDL with an HTTP request. So as you can see here, this is the location of the service and then again the question mark and the WSDL um, tag information at the end 
will provide the WSDL information. There's also a save WSDL object method that can be used if saving the WSDL to the file system is necessary. Though this isn't recommended because you want to be using the current service and if you're working from a file, if the uh, service has changed, you won't have that updated information. It also must be self-contained, meaning that you can deploy it on any host without any additional configuration file or framework. So for example, if your service requires a DVM and a database connection, there's the assumption that those would be uh, handled as part of the service. And Genero helps to meet these requirements in the tools provided for creating your web service. The Genero Web Services extension provides additional library of classes and methods called the XML library. You can import it in the same way that you imported the uh, Web Services library com by using import and XML. Now you can also use a server that also includes a third party's web service. And as we saw in a prior video on creating the client application for a service, we had to first generate the information from that service that we could use. And the same thing is true if you're writing a server using a third party WSDL. You will need to have the WSDL uh, location and it will then generate for you using the FGL WSDL tool, the globals file and the generated BDL uh, functions in this source uh, for GL file. Let's take a look now at the calculator server for GL fi file, which is the full service source. You'll find this file in the FGL dir demo web services calculator server subdirectory. So just as we saw in the presentation, we're first importing the web services library. Then we have our globals section, and you can see here we've got the record for the add operation, add in and add out. We also have a record defined for the subtract uh, input and the subtract output, and the same for a multiply operation and a divide operation. Now if we look at the main, we'll see we've defined a return integer for processing, managing the, the result of the processed request. And then in this particular code, we are providing the ability to uh, uh, call the service and create the WSDL file. So here, if the create calculator service passes true, we're going to go ahead and save the WSDL file from the service. And if not, we will just um, start the service. So if we look at the create calculator service function, we can see here, as we did in the uh, example slides, that we are setting up the web service and web operation uh, objects. We're also setting up a couple other variables. And here we are letting our web service object equal a call to create the web service. We're calling it calculator and we're providing the service NS, which is a string for our namespace for it. And here we're just using the temp URI namespace. Then we are going to publish the functions and calling a the create RPC style for the add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And if you recall, we had to supply the name of the actual function, how we want it referred to in our uh, service, the input and the output records. And then we're publishing the operation. Now if we took a look at the add function itself, we'd see that it is simply doing what we showed in the example on the slide. And the subtract and multiply functions are 
again, very straightforward. So these are the public, these are the public functions that are available as part of the web service. Then if we uh, continue uh, looking at this code, after we've created the service, the next thing we're going to do is to start the service, and we're displaying that the service is listening. Then we will go ahead and provide some information back to the user based on the request. So if it's zero, we will just show on the server that the request was processed. Now let's take a look at this uh, code working as the calculator server. So we've started the server and you can see here's our starting server and the server is listening display. Then as we receive requests from a client that's calling this service, for example this calculator demo client, we are processing each of the requests and the function that is being called from this client is actually a part of that web service that we just looked at. You'll find a step-by-step -step tutorial on both creating a web services server and creating a web services client in the documentation.